Architects apply open grid ceilings for both visual impact and functional flexibility. They introduce texture, discreetly conceal services, and accommodate lighting, making them a clever solution in contemporary design. In this video, we'll explore the features of open grid ceilings permitted beneath sprinklers according to NFPA 13 and examine how this ceiling type affects the spacing requirements for sprinklers installed above. Section 9310 of the 2025 edition of NFPA 13 defines the open grid ceiling. If the ceiling meets those requirements, sprinklers may be installed above the ceiling without the need for additional heads beneath it. A ceiling can be classified as an open grid when three conditions are met. The least dimension of the openings is one quarter inch or more, the thickness or depth of the ceiling material does not exceed that least dimension. The openings make up at least 70% of the total area of the ceiling material. If all three criteria are satisfied, the ceiling qualifies as open grid under the standard. Let's walk through an example to see how these criteria are applied. We'll check opening size, material thickness, and open area to determine if the ceiling qualifies. In this figure, a portion of the grid ceiling is shown in plan view. Each opening measures 5 by 6 inches and the grid width is 1 inch. The ceiling thickness is assumed to be 2 inches. We now turn to the NFPA criteria. The smallest dimension of the opening is 5 inches, which satisfies the first condition. The ceiling thickness is 2 inches, less than the smallest opening dimension so the second criterion is also fulfilled. To determine the openness percentage, start by selecting a repeating pattern that defines the ceiling grid, then calculate both the open area and the total area of the pattern. Dividing the open area by the total pattern area gives the openness percentage. In our example, the open area is 30 square inches and the total pattern area is 42 square inches. This results in an openness percentage of 71%. As we've seen, all three conditions are satisfied, so the ceiling qualifies as an open grid under NFPA 13. Although NFPA 13 permits sprinkler installation above an open grid ceiling, this ceiling type can still affect both heat rise to the sprinkler and the spray discharge pattern. When sprinkler water droplets strike the grid elements, their paths are redirected and cascade downward. This disruption prevents the spray from achieving its intended coverage pattern on the floor. Reduced clearance between the sprinkler deflector and the ceiling grid can limit spray development, leading to a smaller coverage area. Therefore, NFPA 13 establishes sprinkler spacing requirements based on the clearance between the sprinkler deflector and the upper surface of the open grid ceiling. These requirements for light and ordinary hazard occupancies are summarized in the table shown in the figures. It's important to note that ambiguity can arise at the boundary values of sprinkler spacing requirements. For example, in ordinary hazard occupancies where sprinklers are spaced exactly 10 feet by 10 feet, it's unclear whether the required clearance should be 24 inches as specified for layouts with spacing less than that size or 36 inches as required for configurations greater than it. Since NFPA 13 does not explicitly address this boundary condition, interpretation remains uncertain. In such cases, consulting with the authority having jurisdiction is essential to verify compliance and ensure the design aligns with code and performance expectations. The open grid ceiling requirements can also apply to louvered and slatted ceiling systems. For these types, the smallest opening dimension corresponds to the gap between adjacent ceiling members. To meet NFPA 13 criteria, the gap must be at least one quarter inch. The thickness of each member must be equal to or less than the gap, and the overall openness percentage must be at least 70%. 
When all of these requirements are met, sprinklers may be installed above the louvered or slatted ceiling without additional sprinkler heads below. The spacing of the sprinklers will depend on the clearance between the deflector and the ceiling, as outlined for open grid ceiling configurations. It should be noted that when ceiling members are installed closely enough that the openness percentage is up to 20% and each member is at least 2 feet wide, it's recommended to review the cloud ceiling provisions in NFPA 13. If those criteria are satisfied, sprinklers need only be installed below the ceiling surface. To learn more about cloud ceiling requirements, be sure to watch the video shared by the NSV Soft team. Finally, it's important to note that if the distance from the sprinkler deflector, installed below an open grid, louvered or slatted ceiling, to the structural ceiling remains within the allowable limits, the sprinkler may be located solely below the ceiling. In such cases, compliance is achieved regardless of whether the ceiling meets the other open grid criteria and no additional sprinkler above the ceiling is required. In this section, we'll demonstrate how NSV CAD tools assist in verifying NFPA 13 criteria for open grid and slatted ceilings. The first room features an open grid ceiling, with dimensions of both the openings and ceiling members clearly displayed. Now we run the app and input the values based on the measured dimensions. Variables A and B represent the overall grid dimensions, while C and D define the size of each opening. For this example, we assume the grid ceiling has a thickness of 2 inches. Once all values are entered, the software identifies the smallest opening dimension and sequentially checks the three NFPA 13 criteria for open grid ceilings. If all conditions are satisfied, the software confirms that the ceiling qualifies as an open grid configuration. The next room features a slatted ceiling. This time we launch the slatted ceiling app. Variable A represents the width of each ceiling member, while B defines the gap between them. For this demonstration, we assume the slatted ceiling has a thickness of 3 inches. As the software indicates, the openness percentage for this slatted ceiling does not meet NFPA 13 requirements. As a result, sprinklers must be installed beneath both the structural and slatted ceiling. This dual arrangement may introduce the risk of cold soldering a condition where water from an upper-level sprinkler cools the heat-sensitive element of a lower-level sprinkler, potentially delaying its activation. To mitigate this, incorporating shields or barriers should be considered. I hope you find this video helpful. You can download the software from nsvsoft.net 